What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for PNTV. That's Poetry's News and Twisted Views. And today we're going to talk about the, the mess that the Republicans have become this week. <laughs> Just this week alone, child. It's, it's been a mess. You can't, you can't really even see or talk about anything else in the news because of everything that's going on with politics. It is crazy. So, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever. Um, keep your comments respectful. I, I will be uh, deleting and blocking today. Um, let's see here. And, and talk about the damn topics. If you're going to put a comment in the comment section, make sure it's about the topics. I can give a doggone about your opinion about me or your opinion about... Uh, a specific person that ain't got to do with the hell they, they policies. That's what I'm saying. Um, but anywho, so this particular week alone, hey, how you doing? Good morning, welcome, come on in. Um, as I'm doing this live, I may not be able to see your chat, but I, I am gonna turn it on. So if I stop, then I can pick it up um, and I'll try to respond if I can read it. Um, I got notes today, so we're gonna get to it. This is all pretty much about. The Republicans. That's pretty much what this whole thing is. So, back in November of 2023, Representative, um, who's a Republican, Kenneth Buck, had announced that he was not going to run for re-election. He is basically holding the seat um, for the fourth district in Colorado. Colorado has eight districts. And out of his out of the eight districts, three of them are Republican, five mainly vote them. So it's kind of imperative for the Republicans to hold some type of power in the state of Colorado. Um, but he said he's not going to run for re-election, right? So when he announced back in November that he wasn't going to run for re-election, Lauren Burbert who we all know was the one who had all the lewd stuff going on in the, in the theaters while she was watching a, a Broadway play. Yeah, she um, decided that she was gonna run for his seat. Now she currently holds the seat in the third district, again, which is another Republican district, but she has a strong opponent in Adam Schiff. He's a Democrat. Um, even though the third district normally files uh, Republican, they normally go red, Schiff has made such a movement in that district, it is very likely that he's going to flip that district to blue, right? So, what did Bober decide to do in order for her to make her chances better in staying in Congress? She decided she's going to run in the fourth district and said, okay, um, leaving the third district open for the Dems basically to take because um, I don't think there's another strong Republican person out there that um, is putting their bid in for that 4th district seat well just the other day Kent Buck announced that he quitting child he said he ain't gonna wait for the his term to end he was done and so as of March 22nd Kenneth Buck is officially resigning from his seat early. What that means now is that Colorado has to hold a special election for that seat. I don't know why they chose this date, but Colorado is going to hold this special election on the exact same date as the GOP primary in this state. Of course, that's going to cause a lot of confusion to a lot of voters <laughs> because not only are you going to be voting for the special election or the special seat to be filled by Kenneth Buck, you're also still going to be voting on his actual position to be voted uh, to be filled that's supposed to come up this next upcoming term. So, this puts Lauren Berber in a pickle because in order for her to run in the special election, she would have to resign from her seat in the third district. Why she would have to resign is because she can't hold two seats at one time. 
And being that her original term has not ended, again, Buck is uh, leaving early because her term is not ended. She cannot hold both seats at the same time. She can't even run for that seat until her regular seat is over with. So she would have to resign, automatically leaving her district open for anybody to come in and snatch and grab, which most likely would be Adam Schiff. So the thing is, there's no guarantee that she's going to win the 4th district. She thought she was kind of like a shoe-in. But she may not even win the 4th district. What may happen is... Oh, well, she announced the other day she's not going to even take on the special election. She's not going to run at all. So what's possible going to happen in that district? They're going to have the special election for somebody to fill Kenneth Buck's seat that he left early. And that whoever that person is is going to win that seat and they're going to serve up until it's time for the new congressional session to begin again. And if that person is actually running on the primary as well, it's very likely that they're going to get the primary too. Which means Lauren Berger is going to be out of a job. And that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> you know, I'm hoping not to see her face anymore after this year election term so i guess she's, she's really gonna try to make a strong strong push for the fourth district but whoever takes that third district in the special election is almost guaranteed to take it in the primary election if they are on that ballot as well and the reason why i'm saying that is because most people if they going in and place a vote now they got two ballots that they got to vote on and they're giving two ballots. Both of the ballots are saying we want this vote to be for the third congressional district. And you see this person's name on both ballots, you most likely are going to vote for that same person twice. Most people ain't going to vote for two different people. So it's, it might be almost guaranteed that Lauren Berber may be out of a doggone job, especially since she announced that she is not going to run for that special election because that means she got to give up her seat currently in the third district i'm looking forward to that you know that's going to give the dems more power in the congress as, as well they already is already getting slim one of the good things about ken buck leaving now that narrows the republican majority even tighter the the hold and control that they have over congress right now is getting even smaller even smaller child and some of the, the stupid moves I think that the Republicans are doing ain't helping. I was when I first heard that Ken Buck was gonna resign, I was like, here go another motherfucker walking away. I said the same thing about um, Mitt Romney. Um, they they just walking away and they ain't staying in for the fight. I'm not even a Republican, but I still want people in that party to stand up against the Mac because that's what I want them to do. Because I was like, the more of the, the non-MAGA Republicans that are walking away, it is leaving the party open for more MAGAs to come in and take control. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen with this, this doggone primary. Their primary and special election is going to be held on June 25th. So we got a few months to go now to see who may pop up and who put their names on the ballot for that special election. But like I said, Lauren says she ain't finna run for the special because that means she got to give up that third seat right now. But because she already said she's not going to run for third district in the primary, she's not going to have that third, that third district next season anyway. And ain't no guarantee she's going to have the fourth. Okay, so speaking of other crazy stuff that the Republicans have done, they made, well, they put a uh, another MAGA Republican head of the RNC, right? And they made Laura Trump, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law, the co-chair, has no experience at all to run the RNC no experience at all that just a few days prior she had made a uh, 
did a little press briefing or what have you. It says that all the RNC funds was going to be allocated to Donald Trump's legal defense. And I was thinking, how was she making this call? You know, she ain't got no power to do that. But evidently she do that. The crazy thing about her appointment is that the when they announced it, they came out and said she ain't got no damn experience. But they not looking at people to have qualifications at this point. They just looking at somebody that got the passion. Hold on. Run through a water leak. They look at somebody that just got the passion and the determination to do the job. <laughs> if everybody that I know of strictly went off having passion and determinations to do a job, would nobody be unemployed? They wouldn't be looking at nobody's skills. She ain't even got entry level skills. But and they claim that they not going she try to walk it back that they not going to use all of the RNC funds for Donald Trump's legal fund. But we know that that's exactly what they are going to try to do. They probably going to try to rename it, try to earmark it something else. But it's going towards his legal fund, baby. The problem with that is the RNC they use the funds that they, they they earn or they have donated to them or what have you. They use those funds for every Republican in every race nationwide to help sure that they can have um, strong campaigns. And if all that money is being allocated to a Donald Trump defense fund, what money is going towards these individuals who are running for local offices, state offices, things of that nature? None. Not none. So I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to see <laughs> what's going to happen with that also. I think it's crazy and ridiculous that they appointed these two people to run the RNC. Since that appointment, 60 Republicans have quit the RNC. They have moved away from whatever positions that they had within the RNC. At least 60 that I'm aware of have decided to vacate the RNC job. It's getting crazy. But like I said, they leaving those 60 seats open for new MAGA Republicans to take them and fill them in. That's the that's the bad part about it. Ooh, it's messy. The whole GOP right now is messy. It's effing falling apart. I would say that maybe these other Republicans should take the name and start another party but I guess right now ain't the time to do it. Right now they just said, fuck it, fuck it. Just like Ian Buck, he said, fuck these people. I ain't finna do nothing with them. I ain't trying no more. But he claimed he is still gonna be out here fighting a good fight to make sure that the country and its values are still protected. He's still gonna uphold you know his values he said basically almost he almost gave the same speech that that christy gave when he decided to resign uh when he decided to step out of the race because he said that um he gonna make sure that donald trump don't get in office that's basically what they they whole goal is at this particular time okay so in regards to donald trump of course he tried to delay his New York case. Remember, we got a new New York case up in, uh, I was gonna say we got a new New York case up in New York. We have a new criminal case up in New York. Um, District Attorney Alvin Bragg is the one who's in charge of this one. And criminal cases, we looking at jail times and, and hopefully they get jail times and not just fine. Well, he tried to delay this case um, by claiming presidential immunity again. <laughs> The judge quickly knocked that shit back and said, bro, don't play with me. Don't come in my courthouse playing that bullshit. That ain't finna happen. First of all, the crimes that he's been accused of happened when he wasn't even in office. All this stuff happened during his presidential campaign in 2016 or prior to. So presidential immunity, if it existed, which it, it don't, presidential immunity 
does not apply here, sir. In addition to, because he, he asked the judge to wait to see what the uh, Supreme Court is going to decide on his immunity. Even if presidential immunity applied to him, which I don't believe it do, and any other lawyers that I'm listening to don't believe it either. If they did decide to give him immunity, it has no effect on the state case. That case does not go anywhere. So the judge says, fuck you and feed your grits. We go to court on March 22nd. Or is it March 25th? It's one of them days, child. They going to trial. I want to say it's the 22nd. They going to trial, baby. You can't stop it. It's going to keep on moving. Keep on moving. Don't stop now. Keep on moving. Yeah, you going to trial, Trump. Mm-hmm. So now what he's trying to say is, okay, since the judge is not hearing me, then he wants to have all the evidence that happened or that generated after he was elected to be thrown out. Meaning, you know, they're using a lot of his tweets and stuff like that. Um, some payouts that may have happened after uh, he got elected. He wants all of that to be thrown out based off of presidential immunity. First of all, sir, ain't none of that shit have anything to do with you being presidential over the United States. This was all your personal bullshit that you trying to cover up and cover your ass with. So no, sir, that wouldn't fall under either. And the judge already told him so. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with this court. I don't know what it is about the New York judges, but these motherfuckers ain't playing. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it that these New York judges are not playing. And I'm loving it the fact that this particular case right here, jail time, is part of the equation. Lock his motherfucking ass up. He shouldn't be on the god dog on the street right now anyway. If it's anybody else, any other regular ass citizen, we'd be in a fucking holding cell some goddamn where awaiting trial. But that's okay. You're going to trial in a few weeks, buddy. You're going to trial in a few weeks. And they are really stacking this case now to make it stronger than it was before. And I'm loving it. I'm saying. I'm loving it. Um, going on with Trump that I can talk about. I don't know. Nothing else going on with Trump. Okay, so. Oh, yes, it is. Um, as far as his documents trial, you know, Jack Smith is having issues with Eileen Cannon, the judge over that case, and her moving this case forward. She's trying to delay, delay, delay as much as possible. She's they even trying to look to get the case thrown out altogether. But who, 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 what happened? One of the witnesses who was named in the original case, remember, we read over the case, and they had something that was just named employee number four and employee number five. Well, employee number five is now doing interviews, baby. Employee number five is talking about it all. He even came out and said that during when the FBI showed up to the house to retrieve said documents that was under the subpoena, that Donald Trump had them moving documents from the house at that particular time to the airport. This man is spilling all the beans. He's spilling all the beans. He kind of strange to me. He's, he seemed extra giddy to be talking about it. Like, ooh, I'm getting this off my chest finally. I ain't got to be in the shadows no more. I can finally talk about it, baby. I light this green. Let's go. I light this green. So, yeah. His name is Butler. I forgot to get his first name. <laughs> but the Butler said the Butler did it. You know, in the game of Clue, We've been trying to figure out who these people are. Well, he has answered the question in the game of Clue. The butler did it. He's one of the few. He said it was a bunch of them. He got they dropping names and everything, child. So, I, I don't know what Jack Smith needs to do to move that case forward. But like I said, it's more information coming out. It's more secrets being told. So, more evidence is being presented. It's kind of like... It's almost impossible for Eileen Cannon to try to get rid of that case. They need to get rid of her. But it may be beneficial that if she stays on the case, because the 11th uh, District of Appeals Court will be closely examining her actions and her movements. And she need to go to trial. She need to go to jail, too. She need to be like that, because to me, it seems like she doing some criminalistic shit. You know what I'm saying? 
Okay, so I think that's all I got on Trump. Nope, I got more on Trump. Damn, y'all, I got more on Trump. So, in the Georgia case, Judge McAfee has decided to drop six of the charges that were pending against Trump and a few of his co-defendants. Um, three of them specifically was for Donald Trump and then the other three went towards some other defendants. Now, the charges that were dropped is the exact same charge. So based on um, all the conduct that happened during this election fraud, the election tampering, um, they applied a certain charge to that specific conduct, right? So it's that specific charge, which, let's see, let's see if I can read it while I'm driving. The, 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 they have Ill, they have illegally urged election officials in Georgia to violate their oaths of office in attempts to overturn Trump's 2020 election loss in the state. So that is the charge. It appeared in in all the cases six times, and that specific charge is what has been removed. In regards to Donald Trump, it appeared under his charges in three different situations. So now he has 10 charges instead of 13. His RICO charge, the big one, the one that's going to bite him in the ass, that is still standing, y'all. That is still standing against everybody who was charged with RICO. So it's this charge here that he was urging election officials to violate their oath. That's the one that the judge removed. Now, um, what that basically means, they can actually refile the charge. Um, Judge McPhee said that the way that it was written, that those charges did not contain essential details um, alleging what the nature of those acts were. And that's why they have not been um that's why they remain uh, that's why they have been rejected i mean so in other words um if there was some type of felony that had been solicited by them being urged to violate the oath they didn't specify what that felony was in that charge oh bright lights bright lights bright lights so what this tells me though is that I don't believe that Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade is going to be disqualified. Judge McPhee had this case last year. These charges have been there since last July. And now in March of 2024, seven, eight months later, he decides to drop those charges. Makes no sense to me unless the case is moving forward. Because if he was going to disqualify Bonnie Willis and Nathan Wade, the case could essentially go away anyway. If he disqualified them, they could drop the case altogether because nobody in that district attorney's office would be able to take that case. Um, or the case would be reassigned to another uh, office to prosecute. And that office will make the determination on what charges they want to move forward with. So it's very possible if they were disqualified, that those the whole case could have went away. Or those charges specifically could have went away. So for Judge McPhee to come now, seven, eight months later and say, okay, we finna remove these charges. It sounds to me as if he's not going to disqualify them. He's going to make the decision this week, or at least expected for him to make the decision this week on whether or not Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade is going to be disqualified and whether or not they're going to move forward with trial. Now, y'all have probably seen in the news that there was another hearing going on with Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade and the senators of the state of Georgia was um, had called in 
the opposing lawyer, Mershon, I think her name is, a merchant. They called her in to testify. I just now saw the whole, well, one part of the testimony the other day. Baby, it don't make no damn sense. Half, first of all, she can't even remember half the shit she put in her own briefing. And when you're in front of a court of law, they want to know how does this briefing apply to the allegations that you're making. And she couldn't answer none of that. She said she don't even remember what the what the briefing was. How you putting in the briefing saying that such and such is violating this based off of this briefing and you can't this this case file and you can't even tell me what the case file is about. And I put a clip of it or shared it on my community board for y'all to watch if you want to watch it. But one of the key things that I took away from that hearing was um, one of the senators that said he gave a description of all the allegations that had supposedly happened, right? And he said that um, if, well, Merchant, the one who brought the claim, said that if Fonnie Willis had announced to the world that she was going to be sleeping with Nathan Wade, she's going to be dating Nathan Wade, going on cruises with him, accept dinner dates in monetary values over $100 before he started working on this case, if she has you no know, foreseen the future and you no know, was able to predict the future and say this is what she was going to do, then there would be no conflict. So the senator is saying admission of a conflict does not remove the conflict itself. So based off of your own admission, if she had admitted whatever you accusing her of, long time ago then no conflict would be there or you wouldn't be filing a, a conflict you know case against her then there is no conflict because just because let's say i'm taking me for example to give y'all a better understanding if i commit a crime and i don't get caught did the crime still happen yes it did if i come forth and say Hey y'all, before I even get caught and say, hey, I'm gonna commit this crime and then I do the crime and because I said it in the beginning, does that remove that I did the crime? No, it doesn't. So I'm gonna see how they gonna go with that. Basically their hearing had nothing to do with the case itself that's in front of Judge McAfee. That was because somebody decided to file um, a claim with the the Bar Association stating that Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade needed to lose their license. So this was a hearing about whether or not they have violated their, uh, I guess, code of ethics, so to speak, for lack of a better word, or, uh, if that's the right term or not. That's what that case was about. But I wonder if Judge McAfee basically came up with the same conclusion that they came up. There is no conflict, and that's the only thing that they are disputing. Now, I watch a lot of videos, I watch a lot of videos, I'll be down in the comment section arguing with folks like people come on here to this channel, arguing with me and I, and a lot of the people was like, well, she lied under oath. First of all, they have not proved she lied under oath. Um, or they said that she committed a crime, she didn't go to jail for a crime. There was no crime committed at all, even if she decided to have a relationship with him. They have, like I said, they have not proven that she's lied under oath. They have not said anywhere that she's lied under oath. But the thing is that there would not be anything to lie about if this frivolous case hadn't happened. The case is about a conflict of interest. So you can't now change in the middle of the case and say, well, we don't care about the conflict of interest anymore. We just will now say, okay, she lied. Let's focus on that. So I'm, I'm expecting them to come back and say, you know, Ain't nothing going on with their license. They gonna keep their license. They can still practice. That's what I'm expecting them to say as well. I just wonder if Judge McAfee is gonna look at that decision um, and and use that towards his own decision when announcing whether or not this case is gonna be disqualified. And I'm thinking maybe so because for him to go back and look at the charges after that happened, like I said, I think they moving forward with the case. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. If they gonna move, yeah. Um, hello to everybody who came on in. I see we got like five or six people here. 
Um, y'all quiet this morning though. Okay, so I'm almost at work. I was gonna talk about being her and his line on his official report about Biden. It's coming out now that Garland has released the full five hour transcripts and all the stuff he said about Biden's memory was a fucking lie. Um, I'm being quick about this night because I'm about to turn into work. Katie Britt came out and did a whole Handmaid's Tale monologue after the State of the Union address in regards to Biden. And so this was a response to him. And then part of her response, she brought up a woman that had been sex trafficked. And she tried to make it seem like this happened during Biden's administration by some illegals that came into America and harmed this woman. And this is why our borders need to be closed. This and the third. Where the real woman came out, child. The real, real woman came out and said that she a whole guy dog gonna lie. This didn't even happen in the United States. It didn't even happen through a cartel like she said it happened. And it happened when George W. Bush was in office over 20 years ago. So Katie Britt tried to come out and says, I didn't say it was about a little girl. I said it's about a grown woman. Well, they have now verified that the person that Katie Britt was talking about is indeed this woman who said the Katie Britt lied like a motherfucker. Anyway, I'm at work. I want to thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. This has been PNTV Poetry's News and Twisted Views. Y'all let me know how y'all doing. And y'all have a good day. All right, peace.